Hi, my name is Robert. Please read the comments in the about section of this video. It has valuable information and updates. My YouTube channel has a disclaimer video that I encourage you to watch. And please like, share, and subscribe. I hope you found what you're looking for. Thank you very much for watching. That is the brain of the camera system. It uh, has a DVR in it, hard drive, whatever you want to call it. You see you can put a thumb drive in there, pull files off or whatever. It can manage up to 16 cameras as you can see. And this system is designed to run on Cat5. You get all these Cat5 connections here. We're running fresh. So what we're doing is putting uh, cable ends on the Cat5. We have them labeled with the locations that we have them at. I'm putting the ends on them and we are hooking them up to the box. Cat5 cable, we use these Cat5 ends because they're made for solid strands. See, if you use these connectors, they're not used for solid strands. They're used for uh, multiple strands. You punch those through, they last okay. If you punch those through solid strand Cat5 wire like we have here, they probably won't last as long. We want something that'll last, you know, pretty much forever. Then you hook the cable up, you know, store-bought cable from here to your connector there, and you're good to go. If the cable go bad, you unplug it, you replace it. No big deal. The camera I'm working on is number 11. You get your clean cut on the Cat5 cable, have these kit here, this heavy duty scissors there. Then I splice off about an inch and a half of the coating of it. I use this here. It has that little opening there. You put that in there, you spin it around on there. It opens up like a clam. And then I untwine these wires so that I can get them in the connector. I'm using these Cat5e uh, connectors in the bag there. They have two options for wiring. You have A and B. It really don't matter which one you choose as long as you choose the same option on both ends of the cable. So let me go ahead and hook this up, get these cables unstrung. When DSL first came out and before wireless internet was stable, I actually wired my house to Cat5 from one room to the other for my networking and my internet connection. So if you see here, you have B there and you have a brown white wire, a brown wire, solid green wire, solid light blue wire. Go on the other side, you want to stay on the B path. You got an orange, white orange, white green, and white blue. So I'm going to set this in place, show you how it is, and then I'm going to show you how I punch it. Here it is. I have my wires corresponding with their colors on B on both sides. Now I'm going to set this down and use the crimper to punch it. And what it will do is it will penetrate the coating on those strands and lock them in place. And it will cut off the excess at the same time. This is the proper tool. It'll do the cutting at the same time. You can set it to high or low impact with your turn there and hey, then the release blade. Oh, sorry, you have the phone? Your tool held up, you have it over the connector and you just push it down and it'll click. And if you go at the right angle, which is what I tried to do, hard to do with one hand, it'll actually cut off the, uh, the piece as well. So let me try to do one on this side, see if it'll do right for me. See, you want to go on just a slight angle and it'll cut off the excess of wire. So when I pull that up, that wire will likely just fall right off, almost. Let me hit the next one just right. 
because we got a cap that we put on there after that. This one on a little bit of angle. Every time I try to do it on an angle, not holding it in place, it turns on me. So I got to do it with two hands. All right, I held it, hit them all in place. As you can see, I just got that blue sleeve is right on the edge of that. So now I'm going to take the cap that goes on there. Put that down on top of there. And this connection will be good to go. Once the wire is in place in the connection, if you don't have the punch down tool, you can actually use the tool that comes with it to press those down inside the connector. Just push them down till they're all the way down and then trim off the ends of them with a razor blade or some other sharp item so that you can put the cap on them. But that tool right there can punch them down into the connector. Set it in a hard surface, push it down till it gets all the way in there and do all eight of them. You just got to make sure that you get these colors in the right slots because there's no margin of error for having the wrong wire hooked up to the wrong connection. After they're all pushed down in there, you're good to go as long as you got no broken wire somewhere else. Now you got to remember that all eight of these wires may not be used in whatever system you're hooking up. It may use five of these wires or four of them at any rate. You got to make sure they're all hooked up right because you often don't know which wire they use unless you start cutting wires see which one falls out. For instance, in the uh, normal Ethernet internet application, only four of these wires are used. I used to remember, but I don't anymore. So now I'm going to snip off the excess and put the cap on it. Alrighty. This connection is ready. So when I plug the cap 5 uh, pre-made cable in here you should see the number 11 camera light up here when I put it in the back so let me go ahead and do that so here's the deal you can't make a cable as good as Belkin or somebody like that so just use those I got it plugged in we'll see if this number 11 camera fires up let me go ahead and plug it in I'm trying to use my one hand method There it is. It's plugged in. Let's see if that camera appears up here in the display. Not appeared. Oh, there it is. It popped open on the display. So now I can see those two doors that I had that camera aimed at. I'm going to make some minor adjustments to the angle of it and we'll be good to go. Let me go ahead and plug in number 12. If you feel that this information was useful, please like it and share it with your social media friends. You can subscribe to my channel so that you will get notifications of future videos that I post. You can follow me on Twitter, and if you need to contact me directly, please visit my website. And if you have any questions, leave them below, and someone or myself will reply to them. Again, thank you very much for watching.